Fang Yu, undeterred by Chuan Yi's attempts to disrupt the press conference, continued to present Hai Rui's evidence with a calm and composed demeanor. As he displayed the enlarged photo Chuan Ye had posted earlier, the reporters were initially puzzled, unsure of Fang Yu's intentions. However, Fang Yu quickly pointed out discrepancies between the two photos, emphasizing the apparent height difference between the man in the photo and Tang Ning. Drawing attention to the edited background and the lack of authenticity in Chuan Yi's photo, Fang Yu skillfully debunked Chuan Yi's claims of a romantic relationship with Tang Ning. The reporters, realizing the extent of the manipulation, began to murmur amongst themselves, questioning Chuan Yi's credibility. As Fang Yu proceeded to unveil more evidence, including a message from the estate where the photo was supposedly taken, Chuan Yi's confidence waned. His attempts to defend himself fell flat as Fang Yu meticulously dismantled each of his arguments. With Hai Rui's thorough investigation and presentation of evidence, the truth became increasingly evident to the reporters. Chuan Yi's facade began to crumble as Fang Yu exposed his deceitful tactics and lack of integrity. Despite Chuan Yi's protests and attempts to save face, the weight of the evidence presented by Hai Rui was undeniable. Fang Yu's final blow came in the form of a video showing Tang Ning alone throughout her time in Paris. The conclusive footage left Chuan Ye speechless and exposed his lies for all to see. As Fang Yu confronted Chuan Ye about his actions and their consequences, the reporters watched in anticipation, awaiting Chuan Ye's response. Chuan Ye, humiliated and defeated, attempted to leave the press conference, but Fang Yu held him back. With a cutting remark, Fang Yu exposed Chuan Yi's cowardice and lack of integrity, leaving Chuan Ye with no choice but to endure the humiliation in front of the gathered media. As the press conference concluded, the reporters buzzed with discussions of Chuan Yi's downfall and Hai Rui's triumph. Chuan Yi's reputation lay in tatters, and Star King's credibility was severely damaged by his actions. Fang Yu's masterful handling of the situation solidified Hai Rui's position as a force to be reckoned with in the entertainment industry, while Chuan Yi's reputation was irreparably tarnished. In the aftermath of the press conference, Chuan Ye faced backlash from both the media and the public, his once privileged status crumbling beneath the weight of his own arrogance and deceit. Meanwhile, Hai Rui emerged victorious its integrity and dedication to truth and justice reaffirmed in the eyes of the public. As the dust settled, Fang Yu's unwavering determination and strategic prowess had not only protected Tang Ning's reputation but had also exposed Chuan Yi's true character for all to see. In the face of adversity, Hai Rui had prevailed, emerging stronger than ever before. Chuan Ye framed Tang Ning. The almighty heir of Star King, the Chuan family descendant, Chuan Ye, who had loads of potential, actually tried to frame a model. Worst of all this model was a woman. At this time, not only the public but also the people at Star King were filled with discussions, I feel so ashamed. Star King has been completely embarrassed by this spoiled heir. I feel that a real man wouldn't bully a woman in this way. Only women would make things difficult for other women. Could the heir be a transvestite? How did the chairman give birth to rubbish like this? If I was him, I would have trampled him to death a long time ago to prevent him from dragging me down in such a way. Right now he is framing women, what other disgusting things would he do in the future? It's not like a spoiled heir like him would care about others' feelings. Father Chuan held onto some documents as he walked into Star King. As he overheard the whisperings of his staff, his face turned red. In anger, he directly kicked open his office door. His secretary followed behind in fear as she asked him cautiously, Chairman, would you like me to go look for President Chuan? Father Chuan took a deep breath. Suddenly, he gripped onto his chest and knelt on the floor in pain. His secretary was so frightened, she immediately called the ambulance. Tang Ning's innocence had finally been proven. Meanwhile, another big event happened on social media. The CEO of Hai Rui, Mo Ting, created a personal social media account. In an instant, a countless number of fans already started following him. By the time 7 p.m. came around, he already had over 100,000 followers. This was a frightening number. 
The thing the fans were most curious about was, what reason did Mo Ting have for opening a social media account? That night at 8.15 p.m., Mo Ting finally posted up a photo. It was a photo from Hai Rui's celebration dinner, the photo of him carrying Tang Ning on his back. In the photo, Tang Ning peacefully clung onto Mo Ting's back as her eyes twinkled in the light. Meanwhile, Mo Ting was carrying Tang Ning, his head was slightly turned as he looked at her with his gentle and caring gaze. Of course, he not only posted up a photo. He also included six words, I am her one and only. These were six simple but powerful words. It was a simple response to Chuan Yi's insults towards Tang Ning, but... It was enough to stir up the entire industry. God, am I dreaming? I'm not, right? Is President Mo actually revealing his relationship? Oh oh oh. I'm so excited, I'm excited to death. I once again believe in love. I love this couple so much. Apart from Tang Ning, who can make the entertainment industry's big boss become her manager as well as bed warmer. Tang Ning you are amazing. So, this is Hai Rui's highest level of PR, are we witnessing the president being possessed by a wife-protecting demon? I suddenly feel like the air is quite a joke. It's so weird, these two people seem to be on a different level in terms of social standing, yet, I don't feel like they don't suit each other at all. Although I really want to ask questions about LM's wedding ring commercial and Feng CAI's interview, after seeing this post. I suddenly feel like the past is no longer important. I want to dig up information about this couple's daily affectionate activities. Don't anyone stop me. Tang Ning, Tang Ning, come to the surface and say a few words. We request to see you guys in the same frame. Long Ji's excitement overwhelmed Tang Ning as she received news of Mo Ting's public declaration of their relationship. Tang Ning quickly checked Mo Ting's social media post confirming the revelation. Despite feeling elated, Tang Ning remained grounded. Concerned about Mo Ting's whereabouts, Tang Ning called him and learned he was at the hospital attending to old man Chuan, who was seriously ill. Tang Ning felt uneasy about the situation but trusted Mo Ting's reassurances. She expressed her happiness about the revelation, emphasizing her gratitude and concern for him. Tang Ning resolved to await Mo Ting's return at home hoping for his safety and for everything to resolve positively at Star King. Though composed on the phone, Tang Ning's worries lingered, overshadowing her joy at the public acknowledgement of their relationship. Father Chuan was seriously ill, after being admitted to the hospital, he was diagnosed with gastric cancer. After waking up in his hospital bed, the first thing Father Chuan did was instruct his secretary to call for his lawyer and invite Mo Ting to see him. Star King's people quickly heard of the news as they slowly piled into the hospital. Some told Father Chuan to take care, while others requested for him to hand over his authority, these people had long had their eyes on the position. Because his anger was triggered, Father Quan's stomach began to hurt even more. Seeing this, his secretary asked whether she should contact Chuan yet. Father Chuan shook his hand weakly. At this moment, in his current state, he didn't want Chuan yet to witness it. Inside the hospital room, a few shareholders tried to convince Father Chuan to hand over his shares. At least, they believed, it was better than giving the shares to Chuan yet. However, Father Chuan held on with all his life, not saying a word. His frail expression was filled with stubbornness and resentment. If only he didn't fail at teaching Chuan yet. If only he had put more effort into teaching his son would today have turned out different? Chairman Chuan, for the sake of the big picture, you should nod your head and agree to handing over your authority. If Star King is handed over to Chuan yet, we won't feel right. I'm not dead yet, Father Chuan said in a raspy voice. We don't mean it that way. Not long after, Mo Ting entered the hospital room accompanied by bodyguards. As soon as they saw Mo Ting, the shareholders reacted with caution, President Mo, why are you here? I invited President Mo here, Father Chuan signaled for his secretary to help him up and to bring the lawyer over. 
I created Star King with my bare hands. I am well aware that I can't hand it over to my son because he is too incapable. But, there is no way I will hand it over to any of you. In order to protect Star King, I have decided to sell my shares to Hai Rui. Star King will now become a part of Hai Rui. Before Mo Ting could even sit down, Father Chuan swiftly grabbed the contract out of his lawyer's hands and handed it to Mo Ting, I know you are the only person that can make Star King better. So, Mo Ting, I am willing to use the lowest market price to sell all my shares to you. Are you interested? My only condition is, you cannot fire anyone from Star King. Mo Ting received the contract and flipped through a few of the pages. He could suddenly sense the persistence Father Chuan had towards Star King, he'd rather give it to an outsider than to leave it for his own people to destroy. What about your son? I haven't done anything wrong to him. From now on, he will need to walk his own path, Father Chuan shook his head as he held back his tears. He knew, even if he was to hand Star King to Chuan Yat, it would one day end up in the hands of Mo Ting. Rather than letting Star King feel defeated, he might as well hand it over now. At least this way, he could feel rest assured. I am a businessman, there is no way I would pass up an opportunity like this, Mo Ting replied. President Mo, this isn't right, Star King's people immediately protested. I am handing over my money and old man Chuan is giving me his shares in exchange. In what way isn't this right? Mo Ting asked. Is it because you all want to take over the authority of Star King? Did you think, as the CEO of Hai Rui, I wouldn't be able to control Star King? After feeling the full force of Mo Ting's might, the old men secretly wished at that moment that Chuan Ye would show up to stop the deal. However, Chuan Ye was still hiding out on his boat with no intention of returning to the mainland anytime soon. President Mo, Star King is in your hands from now on. Old Man Chuan, as long as you don't regret this decision. All Father Chuan wanted was for Mo Ting to take over. He didn't care whether Mo Ting continued to run it as a modeling agency or something else. He knew, no matter what Mo Ting's decision was, it would be for the better. So, he did not worry at all I'll leave Star King with you, Father Chuan said solemnly. Amidst the chaos at the hospital, Chuan Ye attempted to attack Mo Ting with a dagger, but Mo Ting narrowly dodged, sustaining only a superficial scratch. Chuan Ye's actions were met with shock, and Mo Ting's bodyguards swiftly restrained him. Meanwhile, Father Chuan fainted from the emotional turmoil. Despite his injury, Mo Ting maintained his composure, warning Chuan Ye of the consequences of his actions. He reminded Chuan Ye of his dependence on his father's protection and Star King's support, implying that without them, Chuan Ye would struggle to survive in Beijing. As Mo Ting stood up, Liu Che noticed his injury and suggested seeking medical attention. Mo Ting, aware that Tang Ning was on her way, instructed Liu Che not to inform her about the incident, preferring to handle it discreetly. He urged Liu Che to prioritize getting his wound treated showing concern for Tang Ning's feelings. As Mo Ting and Tang Ning left the hospital, Tang Ning couldn't help but express her relief that Mo Ting's injury was minor. She was still shaken by the incident and couldn't understand why Chuan Ye had resorted to such violence. Upon learning of Father Quan's passing, Tang Ning and Mo Ting decided to pay their respects. They entered the hospital room where Chuan Ye was still reeling from his father's death. Tang Ning confronted him pointing out how his neglect and irresponsibility had contributed to his father's deteriorating health. Tang Ning's words struck a nerve with Chuan Yat, who realized the extent of his failings as a son. Unable to refute her accusations, he could only hang his head in shame. Despite the tension, Mo Ting maintained his composure and offered his condolences. He assured Chuan Ye that he would wait for him to legitimately contest the ownership of Star King showing respect for their past relationship. On their way home, Mo Ting revealed to Tang Ning that he had acquired the Chuan family's shares in Star King, making him the biggest shareholder. Tang Ning was surprised but didn't dwell on the details, knowing that Mo Ting always had her best interests at heart. Meanwhile, 
in a suburban house, a group of reporters contemplated their next move. Editor Lin, frustrated by their missed opportunity to tarnish Tang Ning's reputation, sought a new angle to exploit. He dismissed Mo Ting's announcement of his relationship with Tang Ning as a temporary distraction, confident that Mo Ting would eventually lose interest in her. Just then, a mysterious guest arrived with a lucrative proposition. He offered to fund the reporter's efforts to take down Hai Rui, knowing their expertise and disdain for Mo Ting. Intrigued by the offer, editor Lin accepted the check and agreed to assist in the takeover of Hai Rui. As editor Lin contemplated this new alliance, he realized the potential to exploit the situation for his own gain. With the promise of financial backing, he saw an opportunity to regain control and influence in the cutthroat entertainment industry. Meanwhile, Tang Ning and Mo Ting returned home, where Tang Ning expressed her gratitude for Mo Ting's protection and reassured him of her unwavering support. Despite the challenges they faced, they remained united and determined to overcome any obstacles together. As they settled in for the night, Tang Ning couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. She sensed that their troubles were far from over and braced herself for the challenges that lay ahead. Little did they know, a storm was brewing, fueled by hidden agendas and simmering rivalries. In the cutthroat world of entertainment, alliances were formed and broken in the blink of an eye and Tang Ning and Mo Ting would need to stay vigilant to protect their love and their legacy taking over Hai Rui, Lin Chong repeated. He then replied, although I don't want to admit it. Mo Ting is indeed a very capable leader, no one can deny it. Plus, with Mo Ting around, the unfairness in the industry is currently being controlled. Without Mo Ting, Hai Rui will just be another typical entertainment agency. Lin Chong wasn't stupid, he wasn't going to let a few words scare him into siding with the man. But, right now was indeed not the right time to deal with Tang Ning. She had already been labeled as Mo Ting's woman. Plus, Hai Rui had just settled some chaos. As the car drove into Hyatt Regency, it was already midnight. The couple silently entered their home. As soon as Tang Ning turned on the lights, Mo Ting stretched out his arms to hug her as he whispered in her ear, Let me hug you like this for a bit. Tang Ning did not say anything. She simply felt the weight on Mo Ting's shoulders were so heavy it made her heart ache. Taking over Star King didn't make her happy. It wasn't something Mo Ting had ever wanted. In front of me, you are allowed to show your weaknesses, Tang Ning patted Mo Ting's back, when you need me, I can be your most stable and reliable shoulder to lean on. I can't believe old man Chuan passed away old and lonely, I suddenly feel a little scared. If you had not appeared in my life, perhaps in the end, I would have died all alone too. Tang Ning could sense Mo Ting's embrace tightening around her. So she removed Mo Ting's jacket and buried herself in his arms. It turns out, loneliness is such a scary thing. You must be tired. Let's have a bath and then go get some rest, Tang Ning eventually turned on all the lights, held onto Mo Ting's hand and led him to the bedroom. While she was filling up the bathtub, a question suddenly popped up in Tang Ning's head. All along, she had been well aware of her own goals. She had a dream, she wanted to become an international supermodel. But, what about Mo Ting? He had never mentioned his goals to her. He spent every day occupied with helping others get rich and famous, but never stopped to think or do anything for himself. What are you thinking about? Mo Ting entered the bathroom and asked as he saw Tang Ning in a daze. I was wondering whether becoming the CEO of Hai Rui was your dream. Tang Ning replied. Mo Ting removed his robe and stopped in his tracks. After stepping into the bathtub, he finally shook his head, no. Then, what was your dream? Becoming a screenwriter, Mo Ting laughed. He then waved at Tang Ning, come in. Tang Ning smiled as she removed her robe and stepped into the bathtub. She then leaned against Mo Ting's chest. Of course, before she did this, she had to double-check Mo Ting's injury, in a minute, I'll help you rebandage it. Mo Ting had achieved the dream that others wanted. But, no one knew what he truly wanted. 
Tang Ning's previous assumptions were right, stupid definitely had something to do with Mo Ting. Back when Mo Ting explained the story to her, she had already sensed that Mo Ting's expression was different to when he talked about other things. I haven't asked you, have you decided on the female lead for stupid? Not yet, Mo Ting replied with his eyes closed, I haven't found anyone suitable. Oh, Tang Ning replied gently without continuing with the topic. After quite some time, she suddenly said, I want to have a look at the script. Mo Ting looked like he had fallen asleep, so Tang Ning assumed he hadn't heard her. But, after the couple returned to the bedroom, Mo Ting suddenly retrieved the script from his drawers and handed it to Tang Ning, have a look at it when you have time. It is too late right now. Ahoy, uh -huh. Tang Jing nodded her head. By the way, can you give me your login details for your social media account? I want to go look at some of the comments. Mo Ting pulled out his phone, entered his login details and handed it to Tang Ning. Tang Ning had a quick browse on the phone before closing it up and entering into dreamland with Mo Ting. However, the next morning, Mo Ting's social media account once again exploded. Because underneath Mo Ting's revelation post, Tang Ning had left a message. Of course, she had typed it using Mo Ting's account, making him sound like he was talking to himself but the fans quickly understood what was going on. The content of the message undoubtedly sounded like Tang Ning, at that time, my shoes were too tight and rubbed against my feet as I walked. So, President Mo said, hop on, I'll carry you. The fans were fed a mouthful of dog food. Being able to witness the interaction between the couple so early in the morning, lightened everyone's mood. I don't care. I plan to be infatuated by this couple for the rest of my life. Oh oh oh. Tang Ning left the message at 1 a.m. in the morning. What were they doing together so late at night? The commenter above, don't be so dirty minded, a lot happened yesterday. Someone said they spotted them at the hospital, you can find photos online. Tang Ning rushed to the hospital barefaced. It seems President Mo was injured. What? Injured? Was it serious? Had eyes, I really want to know the latest news regarding them, but I haven't received any updates. This feeling is such torture. Mo Ting's feed was filled with the cries of fans. However, towards his relationship with Tang Ning, they gave their well wishes and supported it. According to fans, the couple's secretive relationship was different to the hype created by celebrities. With one glance, it was obvious to see that Tang Ning and Mo Ting were meant to last a lifetime. Actually, there were plenty of clues online that led to the idea that the two had been together from a long time ago. But, Tang Ning had never used her relationship with Mo Ting to help herself advance. This made many people believe that they were truly in love and refused to use each other for personal gain. Fans even questioned a few so called entertainment bloggers for their thoughts. The response they got was, within the industry, they have long been in a semi-announced state. Simply looking at President Mo, it is obvious to tell he is truly in love. As for Tang Ning, she too loves President Mo. The couple don't put on any acts and is exactly how they appear. I have my hopes up for them. If you don't believe me, I hereby declare on this post that ten years from now they will still be together and still as much in love. Over the next few days, Mo Ting was completely occupied with taking over Star King. Tang Ning didn't want him to be too tired, so she either suspended some of her jobs or asked Long Ji to handle them. Tang Ning received an email from Fools in France. They wanted her to be the first to see their costume design for the female lead of Stupid. As soon as she saw the design, Tang Ning's mind began to imagine the personality of the character. The female lead wasn't educated. She was discovered by a talent scout while she was washing dishes in a restaurant. After her debut, she was banned by multiple companies because she couldn't control her temper. But, in the end, she returned to the big screen with the help of a rich businessman. From that point on, she held the position of top actress for the next 30 years. So, how did the male lead come into the picture? 
During the time she was being supported by a rich businessman, the female lead wasn't willing to give up her virginity to him. So, she went to look for the male lead's father a talented athlete and ended up having a one-night stand. This character appeared to spend her entire life doing childish things. But, in reality, she had been through a lot of difficulties and was mentally complex. Especially after seeing Full's costume design, Tang Ning felt the character was beginning to come to life. The female lead didn't have many lines. So, whenever Tang Ning had nothing to do, she would memorize it and practice reciting it in front of the mirror. On one occasion, she was discovered by the busy Long Ji. What are you doing? Nothing much, Tang Ning replied calmly as she closed the script. Long Ji didn't believe her as she approached curiously. She discovered the script in Tang Ning's hands, since she was standing in front of the mirror, could it be that she wanted to change career paths? Do you want to act? Me? No way. I have no background in acting and haven't done any foundation work, Tang Ning shook her head. The only reason she was practicing in front of the mirror was because she felt a strong interest towards the character. You underestimate yourself too much, Long Ji shook her hands and sat beside Tang Ning, however, that is exactly the reason why I am here. Long Ji handed an invite to Tang Ning, Chanel's perfume launch. I've rejected all other invites. Okay, Tang Ning nodded her head. Tang Ning, these days, only the big brand names have been looking for you. It makes me so happy, Long Ji exclaimed as she leaned against Tang Ning. Especially after your relationship with Boss was revealed, those wanting to invite the two of you to attend their events together, have formed a line right out the door. Be honest with me, have you been trying to lose weight lately? Tang Ning felt that Long Ji looked a bit skinnier. I can't hide it from you. During the times when we weren't at work, I've dropped by the gym a few times. Not bad, right? You can see the results. Long Ji stood up and spun around a few times. Tang Ning cleared her throat. She still had an opinion towards Long Ji's stomach. Why did you suddenly decide to lose weight? Don't you think it's all right for you to be a little chubby? You need a bit of meat on you to look good. Every time, Long Ji's face flushed red as she sat back down next to Tang Ning and said, Every time I go over to L. Yu Che's place and we end up kissing passionately, he would suddenly look like he's in pain and go to sleep on the sofa. It must be because of my figure, you don't know why he's in pain. Tang Ning asked. I still want to lose more weight. Which woman doesn't want to appear perfect in front of the person they love? I don't think he minds. After all, he's already seen how you are. Actually, Long Ji was only slightly chubby, but this was what made her look good. Plus, your relationship seems to be quite stable. When are you guys planning to settle down? Not that fast, Long Ji replied. But after she thought about how Tang Ning and Mo Ting got married as soon as they met, she couldn't help but laugh, what I mean is, I still want to enjoy my freedom for a little longer. That's enough talking. I've already given you the invite. The event will start 7 p.m. tomorrow at Gold Hotels, I'll come pick you up at 6 p.m. After speaking, Long Ji stood up and said to Tang Ning, L. Yu Che wants to eat dessert from a store on the west end of town. I'm going to go buy it now. Go ahead. Drive safe. A woman in love really couldn't be messed with. As she watched Long Ji leave, Tang Ning shook her head. The dessert store Long Ji spoke of, only sold 100 bowls a day. If she was to go at this time, it wasn't guaranteed there would still be any left. As she thought about how L. Yu Che had mentioned the dessert multiple times, Long Ji sped up the car. However, an old lady walking a dog suddenly ran onto the road. Long Ji was so shocked she immediately swerved the car and smashed into the roadside protective barrier. Long Ji's head smashed against the shattered glass of the window. After feeling dizzy for a little while, she fainted. By the time she woke up, she realized she was in the hospital. L. Yu Che was standing by her bed discussing her condition with the doctor. A moment later, the doctor left. 
El Yu Che then leaned over and asked, You're finally awake? Do you feel unwell anywhere? Long Ji shook her head. Do you know how busy I've been the past few days? Have I wasted your time? It's bad enough that I was busy, I was even frightened half to death by you, El Yu Che sighed, You're not usually this impatient, I wanted to buy dessert for you and was scared they would close before I got there, Long Ji explained. You've mentioned it quite a few times. I know you've been working hard on Star King's takeover and haven't got much rest. I simply wanted to cheer you up. El Yu Che let out a gentle laugh. He suddenly felt his tiredness disappear. I kept mentioning that dessert because I wanted to tempt you away from losing weight. I didn't actually want to eat it. Long Ji, so, I got myself into an accident for no reason. Not exactly, El Yu Che leaned over and whispered in Long Ji's ear, at least you've given me half a day off work. Long Ji threw a punch at El Yu Che, however, El Yu Che caught it and stopped her, fatty, let's go home. Okay. El Yu Che helped Long Ji up. At this time, the old lady that was walking a dog earlier, appeared in the room and started apologizing to Long Ji, I'm so sorry little lady. I'm getting too old to control my dog. Chanel's perfume launch was a grand affair held at Gold Hotels, attended by the elite of the fashion and entertainment world. Tang Ning arrived punctually, exuding grace and elegance in a black designer gown that accentuated her natural beauty. Despite the glamorous surroundings, Tang Ning maintained her composure as she mingled with the guests, her presence commanding attention and respect. As she made her way through the crowd, Tang Ning couldn't help but notice the curious glances and whispers that followed her. It seemed that even among the high society, her status as the wife of Mo Ting, the influential president of Hai Rui, brought an air of intrigue. However, amidst the chatter and clinking of glasses, Tang Ning's attention was suddenly drawn to a familiar figure across the room. It was Lin Chong, the editor she had encountered before, engaged in an intense conversation with a mysterious man. Despite the distance, Tang Ning could sense an air of tension between them. Instinctively, Tang Ning's curiosity was piqued. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. With a subtle nod to acknowledge her presence, Tang Ning excused herself from the conversation she was engaged in and discreetly made her way towards Lin Chong and the mysterious man. As she approached, Tang Ning caught snippets of their conversation. They were discussing something about her but the specifics remained unclear. Sensing her proximity, Lin Chong shot her a wary glance, his expression tense and guarded. However, before Tang Ning could intervene or eavesdrop further, her phone buzzed with an urgent message. It was from Mo Ting, his tone grave and serious. Instinctively, Tang Ning excused herself from the gathering and stepped into a quieter corner to answer the call. What's wrong? Tang Ning asked her concern evident in her voice. I've received some troubling information, Mo Ting replied, his voice low but firm. It seems that someone is trying to undermine you and Hai Rui. I need you to be vigilant and stay safe. Tang Ning's heart skipped a beat. She knew that Mo Ting rarely expressed concern unless the situation was dire. Sensing the gravity of the situation, Tang Ning nodded silently, her mind racing with possibilities. As she ended the call and returned to the event, Tang Ning's senses were on high alert. Despite the dazzling lights and glamorous facade, she couldn't shake the feeling of impending danger lurking in the shadows. With each passing moment, the tension in the air seemed to thicken, casting a shadow over the otherwise festive atmosphere. Unbeknownst to Tang Ning, the events of the evening were far from over. As she navigated the intricacies of the high society, Unseen forces were at play, threatening to unravel the delicate balance she had worked so hard to maintain. With determination in her heart and Mo Ting's unwavering support by her side, Tang Ning steeled herself for the challenges that lay ahead. For in the world of glamour and fame, where appearances could be deceiving and alliances could shift in an instant, it was her strength and resilience that would ultimately prevail. Tang Ning remained composed in the face of Qi Zinyan's provocation. Instead of rising to the bait, 
she maintained her dignified demeanor and replied with a calm yet cutting tone, Miss Chi, I'm surprised you're still clinging to outdated stereotypes. In this day and age, one's worth is not determined by their profession or background, but by their actions and character. With her words, Tang Ning subtly challenged Qi Xinyan's narrow-minded views, refusing to be belittled or intimidated. Instead of stooping to her level, Tang Ning chose to assert her confidence and self-worth, leaving Qi Xinyan momentarily speechless. As the event continued, Tang Ning focused her attention on enjoying the evening, unfazed by Qi Xinyan's attempts to undermine her. With Mo Ting's unwavering support and her own inner strength, Tang Ning knew she could rise above any obstacles that came her way. She knew better than anyone how Mo Ting was. Aren't you angry? Why should I be angry? Tang Ning asked back. In this industry, there are plenty of people who have said even worse things than you. Why should I care? In that case, what do you get out of being with Mo Ting? Or, could it be that you are well aware of where you stand and know that he is just having a bit of fun with you? yet you don't care. Words like this were extremely straightforward. Even Zhang Yun, who was watching from the side, broke out in a cold sweat on behalf of Tang Ning. Although Mo Ting had revealed that he was in a relationship with Tang Ning, Qi Xinyan was right. In this industry, the true entertainment industry, Mo Ting had merely revealed a relationship. It wasn't of much benefit to Tang Ning, since they could break up at any time and the big boss of the entertainment industry who was hidden out of view, high up above everyone else if he wanted to get rid of a model, it would be as simple as a few words. It was extremely simple, Tang Ning maintained a smile the entire time, not taking Qi Xinyan's words to heart. Zhang Yun thought Tang Ning was rendered speechless by Qi Xinyan's words, but after she looked at the expressions of the other artists on their table, Zhang Yun let out a gentle laugh. Qi Xinyan's words didn't just offend Tang Ning. Selling their bodies? The other artists glared at Qi Xinyan like she was a joke. Someone even pretended to knock over a wine glass, the content spilling all over Qi Xinyan's dress. Sorry Miss Qi, let me wipe that up for you. No need, keep your distance from me, Qi Xinyan jumped up out of her seat avoiding physical contact and immediately headed for the bathroom. After she left, the female artists sitting around the table crossed their arms, every time I see someone that acts like they are better than everyone else, I feel like throwing a slap across their face. Tang Ning, how could you tolerate her? Tang Ning lifted her wine glass as a toast to the women, fully uncovering her black belly nature. Why did she personally have to make a move when someone would eventually use their actions to tell her how despising someone was? Zhang Yun lowered her head and let out a gentle laugh. It was worth mentioning that Tang Ning's methods were definitely an eye-opener. I finally understand why, out of the billions of women in this world, you are the one to be standing beside Mo Ting. Mo Ting chuckled softly, his eyes warm as he reached out to caress Tang Ning's cheek. My dear wife, you don't need to worry about such trivial matters. If anyone dares to trouble you, they'll have to answer to me. With a reassuring smile, he gently squeezed her hand, conveying his unwavering support and protection. Tang Ning couldn't help but feel a sense of comfort wash over her as she leaned into Mo Ting's embrace. With him by her side, she knew she could face any challenge that came her way, no matter how formidable the opponent. As they continued their journey home, Tang Ning felt a renewed sense of confidence and determination. With Mo Ting's love and support, she was ready to confront whatever obstacles lay ahead, knowing that together, they were an unstoppable force if she comes looking for trouble, I'll give her trouble, can we move on now? Mrs. Mo. Mo Ting cleared his throat. In reality, the decision he had made back then was the most ridiculous thing he had ever done in his 32 years on earth. Luckily, Tang Ning had shown up on that day. Otherwise, he would have already become a divorcee by this time. Actually, Tang Ning wasn't truly upset. After all, their relationship had nothing to do with anyone else. There was no point allowing an unimportant person to drive a wedge between their relationship. However, as they drove, Mo Ting suddenly started chuckling to himself. 
Tang Ning creased her forehead and looked at him confusedly, what are you laughing at? I suddenly think you are amazing. You swept in and saved my life. Mo Ting praised. After hearing this, Tang Ning grabbed onto Mo Ting's right hand and replied gently, you've saved me even more. In actual fact, the couple had saved each other. As the car pulled up at a red light, Mo Ting stopped the car and looked down at Tang Ning, at the head that was leaning against his shoulder. His heart had one simple thought, you don't know how precious you are to me. Chi Xinyan suffered a huge humiliation at Chanel's perfume event. So, as soon as she returned home, she rushed into Father Kai's study room. Father! Xiao Yan, what is it? Why is your face so pale? Father Chi put down the documents in his hands and waved his precious daughter over. Chi Xinyan held back her displeasure as she explained everything that happened at the Chanel event to her father. Father, I can't tolerate being treated like this. Every time Chi Xinyan thought of the way Mo Ting had treated her, her eyes turned red in anger. But, did you say the model's surname is Tang? Father Chi thought for a moment before continuing, I believe Tang Ning is the granddaughter of the Tang family. I'll give them a call in a moment to confirm. If she really is, I will definitely make Tang Ning explain herself in front of us. Father, are you trying to say that Tang Ning is the heiress of the infamous perfume empire? That's right. You even visited their home when you were a child. Don't you remember? Back then, you used to fight over toys with Tang Ning's older sister, Tang Xian. After hearing Father Kai's words, Qi Xinyan felt even more displeased. Originally, she was at a high enough social status to step all over Tang Ning whenever she wanted. After all, Tang Ning was just a mere body-selling model. But, now that she knew Tang Ning was also an heiress, the feeling of being dragged down to the same level, wasn't a feeling she enjoyed at all. Why isn't she with the Tang family then? From what I heard, she's been kicked out of the family home. I'm not too sure what happened. If you want to know, you should go pay them a visit. Kicked out? In other words, Tang Ning was just an abandoned heiress? Qi Xinyan finally felt her emotions stabilize, in that case, I would need to trouble father to notify them of my visit. The cold wind whistled through the streets, while people wrapped in down jackets rushed back and forth. Long Ji looked out at Beijing's night view. Just as she went to open the window, Liu Che quickly pulled it back shut, are you trying to catch a cold? Long Ji turned around to find Liu Che feeding the dog. The tall man was kneeling before the big golden retriever. It was an image that could melt a person's heart. Let's go back to the bedroom. Liu Che stood up as he waved for Long Ji to follow. Long Ji subconsciously laughed. Tonight was their wedding night. They did not notify anyone, they were the only ones that knew. During their lunch break, they simply took some time to pop into the civil affairs office and got a marriage certificate. It seemed a bit careless, but Long Ji felt, this man was someone she could give the rest of her life to. If she didn't hold on to him now, she would someday regret. Their bedroom wasn't big but the customary happiness decorations were stuck on the walls and their bedding had also been changed to red. These small touches seemed to symbolize that their future would be spent together. Long Ji suddenly felt a strong sense of belonging. She was no longer on her own, she now belonged to someone. For the sake of sex, you married me, I don't know what to do about you. Although I can't deny that sex was a contributing factor, I chose to marry you because I sincerely wanted to. From the first day that we started dating, it was already something I wanted to do, Liu Che wrapped his arms around Long Ji and passionately kissed down upon her lips. He then undid her robe, don't be nervous. I, I'm not nervous at all, Long Ji replied. How convincing do you think you sound? Liu Che listened to her stumble on her words as he lay her down on the bed and pressed his tall built body on top of hers. He then quickly removed the restrictive clothes from his own body. Long Ji's cheeks burned red as she covered her eyes, don't look at my chubby body. In reality, Long Ji was merely big boned, 
she could not truly be considered as fat. Regardless, what Al Yu Che liked most about her was her cheerful and bright personality. If Long Ji was to become skinny like a typical girl, he would feel it was quite a shame. He felt she was one of a kind and did not need to make a single change. So, the things she disliked the most about herself, L. U. Che loved with all his heart. Long man, look at me. No. L. U. Che did not wait for her to face him. He directly leaned over and forced his lips upon hers. Long Ji quickly relaxed and surrendered as she found her arms automatically hooking themselves around L. U. Che's neck. Wait until after the new year, we will go meet your grandfather. I know he has a slight misunderstanding towards me. But, trust me, I will make him change his mind. I trust you, Long Ji nodded her head in seriousness. This time, L. U. Che no longer had anything holding him back. Like a sudden downpour of rain, his kisses fell uncontrollably upon every part of Long Ji's body. His violent passion made it hard for Long Ji to retaliate. In fact, she felt like it wasn't enough. Since they were to love, they should give everything and love with all their might. In the past, Long Ji had always been afraid of the cold and especially hated winter. But now that she had a human heater beside her, she wished every day would be winter, so she could hug her lover tighter and share their warmth. After their intense activity finished, Long Ji fell asleep. Meanwhile, L. Yu Che looked at the woman in his embrace and couldn't help but smile. It seemed, he had officially adopted a little pig. Chi Xinyan's eyes widened in surprise at Tang Xian's blunt revelation. She had not expected such a straightforward response. Kicked out? But why? Tang Xian shrugged nonchalantly. Isn't it obvious? Because of M.O. Ting. Chi Xinyan frowned, trying to make sense of the situation. M.O. Ting? Tang Ning's boyfriend. Yes, M.O. Ting. Grandfather didn't approve of their relationship, so he kicked Tang Ning out of the family, Tang Xian explained matter-of-factly. Chi Xinyan couldn't help but feel a mixture of shock and curiosity. She had heard of M.O. Ting's reputation and his powerful status in the industry, but she hadn't realized the extent to which he had affected Tang Ning's life. Sister Xian, do you know where Tang Ning is now? Chi Xinyan asked hoping to gather more information about the situation. Tang Xian hesitated for a moment before responding, I'm not entirely sure. She's been keeping a low profile lately, focusing on her career and her relationship with M.O. Ting. Qi Xinyan nodded, feeling a sense of sympathy towards Tang Ning. Despite her success in the industry, it seemed that she had faced her fair share of challenges and hardships. Sister Xian, do you think there's any way I can help Tang Ning? Qi Xinyan asked earnestly. Tang Xian's expression softened slightly as she regarded Qi Xinyan. To be honest, I'm not sure. Tang Ning has always been independent and determined. But if you genuinely want to help her, perhaps reaching out and offering your support would mean a lot to her. Qi Xinyan nodded, making a mental note to extend an olive branch to Tang Ning. Despite their differences, she couldn't help but admire Tang Ning's resilience and strength in the face of adversity. As their conversation continued, Qi Xinyan couldn't shake the feeling of admiration and respect she felt towards Tang Ning. Despite the challenges she had faced, Tang Ning had remained true to herself and had never allowed anyone to undermine her worth or her abilities. Meanwhile, in the M.O. household, M.O. Ting and Tang Ning were engrossed in their discussion about the upcoming film project. Tang Ning's unwavering belief in the success of the film and her determination to support M.O. Ting's dreams only served to strengthen their bond as a couple. As they delved deeper into their conversation, Tang Ning couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in M.O. Ting's talents and his unwavering dedication to his dreams. Despite the obstacles they faced, she knew that together, they were capable of achieving anything they set their minds to. With their love and support for each other, Tang Ning and M.O. Ting faced the challenges ahead with confidence and determination. As they continued to pursue their dreams, they knew that nothing could stand in their way. And as for Qi Xinyan, she vowed to reach out to Tang Ning and offer her support in any way she could. 
despite their differences, she knew that sometimes, a simple gesture of kindness could make all the difference in someone's life. Why are you suddenly interested in her? Tang Xian maintained her elegant image as she asked. Her eyes looked at Qi Zinyan piercingly, you guys aren't actually well acquainted, are you? Qi Zinyan was exposed, so she smiled back awkwardly as she explained, I'm simply not sure why a rich heiress would degrade herself in such a way and bring shame to her family. This isn't something you should worry about. Tang Ning is well aware of what she is doing, Tang Xian cut in before Qi Zinyan could finish. Miss Qi, this is a Tang family matter. Qi Zinyan understood that the Tang family wasn't one to offend, so she quickly retreated, Sister Xian, I don't mean anything by this. I am merely sympathizing with you. There is nothing to sympathize about. After Qi Zinyan left, Tang Xian asked the maids to clean up the cup she drank from. Just as she got up, Grandfather Tang entered the living room with the support of his walking stick. Grandfather. I noticed the young miss from the Qi family just visited. What was it regarding? Tang Xian did not dare to mention Tang Ning in front of her grandfather, so she simply replied, she was merely sending her regards, nothing special. Grandfather Tang glanced at Tang Xian with his piercing eyes. His pupils glimmered with suspicion, but he did not continue questioning her. I assume the rich heiress they spoke about was her. How dare she shake my granddaughter's hand and snobbishly act like it was dirty. Tang Xian was stunned. Grandfather. Don't tell me you still think I am angry at Tang Ning? I'm sure you all know deep down why I had to send Tang Ning away. The person that did something ridiculous was your father, it had nothing to do with Tang Ning. Yes, I was disappointed in her once, but Tang Ning is still my granddaughter this is the undeniable truth. Grandfather Tang did not say much more. But, Tang Xian felt a strong sense of discomfort and anxiety. Within the Tang family, Tang Ning was the only child of the mistress, yet, she was the one that received the most love from Grandfather Tang. What right did Tang Ning have? And what did Grandfather Tang mean by his words? Tang Ning had no idea that her name had caused a stir in the Tang household. She was simply focused on preparing for her shoot with Fools in France and was trying her best to achieve the result Mo Ting wanted. Just before setting off to France, Long Ji requested for some time off from Tang Ning. After Tang Ning finished packing her luggage, she turned to Long Ji questioningly, Haven't you always followed me regardless of whether we are headed for heaven or hell? Ever since you started dating L. Yu Che, you no longer stick by my side. I simply want to spend more time with him. Plus, boss will be accompanying you the entire time. It makes no difference whether I am there or not, Long Ji explained as she smiled at Tang Ning. Tang Ning carefully observed Long Ji and discovered marks all over her neck, is that the reason you abandoned me? Long Ji quickly covered her neck and cleared her throat, that. Has L. Yu Che made a move on you? What do you mean made a move? Sounds so bad, Long Ji pulled out her marriage certificate and handed it to Tang Ning, we are legally wed. Legally. Tang Ning looked at the marriage certificate and was a little surprised, why didn't you mention this before? That night, it was getting late and we were getting a little carried away, so I told him I didn't agree with premarital thing. As a result, we got married the next day. That afternoon, as Mo Ting returned home, Tang Ning excitedly told him about L. Yu Che and Long Ji's marriage. She also told him to give L. Yu Che a few days off. M. O. Ting thought about it for a moment and agreed, okay, since he is of no use at the moment anyway. Is that a complaint I hear? Tang Ning handed her luggage to M. O. Ting and laughed Huo Jing Jing isn't in France. Tang Ning froze. She didn't expect M. O. Ting to see through to her real intention. Plus. You've underestimated your husband. Tang Ning did not refute. She opened the car door and hopped aboard with Mo Ting. Their flight was scheduled for 8 p.m. Mo Ting brought along a few accompanying staff and arrived at the airport. As soon as they stepped in, they immediately drew the attention of passers-by. In fact, they didn't simply draw in a small crowd, 
the crowd they attracted covered a large section of the airport. The crowd was so big that Tang Ning and Mo Ting had no way of getting through. The airport's security immediately jumped into action as they carefully tried to escort them out of the crowd. However, Tang Ning remained surrounded by fans, to the point where she wasn't feeling well. At first, Mo Ting simply held onto Tang Ning's hand. But, there were too many fans. So, he immediately gave off his domineering aura as he stopped in his track, removed his sunglass, pulled Tang Ning from his right side to his left and wrapped his arm around her in a half-hug position. The fans started squealing in excitement. Tang Ning noticed Mo Ting was extremely tired but couldn't stop to rest. So all she could do was step out from Mo Ting's embrace, remove her sunglasses and bow to the fans, my apologies, could everyone please clear a path for us? He hasn't had any rest for a few days and isn't in the best condition. Tang Ning's transformation into the character from Mo Ting's script left everyone in awe, but Mo Ting remained firm in his decision not to push her into acting. As they prepared for the upcoming fashion week, Tang Ning's focus shifted back to her modeling career, where she truly excelled. Fools, however, couldn't shake the feeling that Tang Ning was meant for more than just modeling. Despite Mo Ting's reassurances, Fools continued to harbor doubts about his decision. As fashion week approached, Tang Ning poured herself into her work, walking the runway with grace and elegance. Her presence captivated the audience, and her performances received rave reviews from fashion critics and fans alike. Yet, Fools couldn't help but feel a sense of longing for what could have been if Tang Ning had pursued acting. Meanwhile, Mo Ting observed Tang Ning's success with pride, knowing that he had made the right decision in supporting her career in modeling. Despite Full's persistent doubts, he remained steadfast in his belief that Tang Ning's talents were best suited for the fashion industry. As Fashion Week came to a close, Tang Ning received an unexpected invitation to attend a prestigious film festival in Khan. The invitation sparked renewed interest in Tang Ning's potential as an actress, leaving Full's even more convinced that Mo Ting's decision to keep Tang Ning in the world of fashion was a missed opportunity. Yet, Mo Ting remained unwavering in his support of Tang Ning's choices, knowing that her happiness and fulfillment were more important than any potential career in acting. He reassured Fools that Tang Ning was where she belonged, and that her success in the fashion industry was just the beginning of her journey. As Tang Ning continued to flourish in her modeling career, Fools couldn't help but wonder what could have been if Tang Ning had pursued acting. However, she respected Mo Ting's decision and chose to focus on supporting Tang Ning in her chosen path. In the end, Tang Ning's success in the fashion industry spoke for itself, proving that she was more than capable of making her mark without pursuing a career in acting. And while Fools may have had her doubts, she ultimately accepted Mo Ting's decision and continued to support Tang Ning in her endeavors. Fools' commercial didn't require much work. The entire shoot only required half a day's time. But, as Fools looked down the barrel of the camera, she still felt it was a shame that Mo Ting wasn't using Tang Ning. Are you worried that Tang Ning doesn't have enough acting foundation and can't handle being an actress? Fools questioned Mo Ting. I simply don't want to force her into doing something she doesn't want to do, Mo Ting crossed his arms and replied to Fools. O Ting looked at Tang Ning from behind the camera and admired her confidence as he smiled, She is my only treasure. Even if my dream is involved, I will happily step aside and make way for her. Fine then, it seems I have no way of convincing you, Fools knew that was as far as she could go. Regardless, I still feel extremely honored to have met you and a great model like Tang Ning. I am quite fascinated by the two of you. It seems, as long as you are together, nothing can stand in your way. I guess you're right, Mo Ting could not deny this point. After the shoot was complete, they headed to dinner together. What are you thinking about? Mo Ting noticed Tang Ning was in a daze, so he pressed her against the bed and untied her robe. Tang Ning immediately sensed Mo Ting's desirous request. So, she composed her thoughts and hooked her arm around Mo Ting's neck. What time will we be flying back tomorrow? Noon. Then, before Tang Ning could finish her sentence, Mo Ting's kiss had lowered onto her lips. 
Tang Ning carefully counted Mo Ting's eyelashes, she suddenly had the urge to stare at him in detail from up close. However, Mo Ting abruptly sat up, grabbed onto her arms and placed them on his robe, help me take it off. Tang Ning sat up as her robe slipped off her body. She looked at Mo Ting seductively as she removed his robe and ran her slender fingers across the back of his neck. The two perfectly fat-free bodies intertwined together like vines, not leaving even the tiniest gap between them. The possessive urge to swallow each other whole, drove the couple crazy. Mo Ting never left marks on Tang Ning's body, but Tang Ning would leave gentle bite marks on Mo Ting's shoulder every now and then. However, Mo Ting never felt any pain. Because he knew better than anyone, this was an exclusive marking that Tang Ning left for him. After the couple finished their pleasurable activity, Mo Ting embraced Tang Ning in his arms, keeping their bodies entangled together. Tang Ning did not say a word, the corners of her lips simply curved upwards. When one loved another, they would understand the feeling of wanting to be treated this way, and wanting the deepest form of possession. The next day, Tang Ning accompanied Mo Ting as they slept the entire morning away. She originally wanted Mo Ting to rest for a few days. But after seeing the excitement on his face as he discussed stupid, she no longer felt she had a reason to hold him back. The only problem she had at present was, their sleeping position last night, slightly exceeded the level at which she was comfortable with. So, as she woke up, her face slightly blushed red. A certain male organ was still occupying an important part of her body, she didn't think it could possibly be comfortable. So, she tried to help him remove it. As Tang Ning stretched out her hand, Mo Ting woke up. However, he didn't let her know because he didn't want his delicate little wife to feel awkward. After Tang Ning finished what she was doing and covered him with a blanket, Mo Ting finally wrapped her in his arms and pressed her under his body, Mrs. Mo, you are extremely virtuous. Tang Ning knew he was deliberately trying to tease her, so she shyly covered her cheeks, you should sleep for a little while longer, there is still a bit of time before we need to go to the airport. After speaking, Tang Ning freed herself from Mo Ting's embrace and hid in the bathroom. Mo Ting sat up as he chuckled. If he could be this happy every morning, he would be willing to exchange his life for it. 1 p.m. The couple were due to board their flight back to Beijing. However, just before boarding time, Tang Ning received an unexpected phone call. As a result, her expression changed. It's Tang Xian. Come see me when you get back. The Tang family. Upon hearing Tang Xian's voice, Tang Ning felt like she was talking to someone from a previous lifetime. Who would have thought, with the blink of an eye, nine years had already passed. In reality, Tang Ning had already become accustomed to having no family. To suddenly receive a phone call from the Tang family, her first thought was, trouble must be brewing. Noticing Tang Ning remained silent for a while without responding, Tang Xian spoke in a firmer tone, Are you not willing? I don't think we have any need to see each other, Tang Ning replied directly. During her youth, she had always felt like she had stolen something from others. But that was because, at 17-18 years old she was still young and impetuous. However, she was now 26 years old and no longer needed to hide her true thoughts. Towards the Tang siblings, apart from mutual hatred, she did not feel anything else for them. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., I will get my driver to come pick you up. Tang Xian didn't seem to care about anything Tang Ning said. So Tang Ning couldn't be bothered to continue resisting. In the end, she replied, I can drive myself. Up to you. As Tang Ning put down her phone, Mo Ting placed his arm around her shoulder, what happened? Tang Xian wants to meet with me. She is the Tang family's eldest granddaughter, Tang Ning explained. However, I simply want to live my life with you. I don't want to have anything to do with the Tang family. Mo Ting kissed her on the forehead as he spoke to her in a heart-aching tone, I know. After I meet with her briefly tomorrow, I'll come straight home. I'm not going to stick around for long. Tang Ning waited to see if Mo Ting had an opinion. 
Okay. Take our best car out for a drive. Tang Ning understood Mo Ting's intention, he didn't want her to be looked down upon by Tang Xian. However, Tang Ning didn't feel there was any point in doing something like that, Tang Xian's deep-rooted discrimination towards her traced all the way back to her mother. After boarding their flight, Tang Ning fell asleep quickly because of the indulgent activity from the previous night. Meanwhile, Mo Ting held her in his arms as he thought to himself, no one can bully Tang Ning. Not even if they're from the Tang family, the next morning, Tang Ning headed down to their garage and spotted the limited edition Maybach parked in the back corner. However, she shook her head and decided to pick the least attention-seeking car of the lot, this was a more convenient choice. She was to meet Tang Xian at one of Beijing's most high-class private clubs. 9 AM Tang Ning arrived at the club and sat inside the reserved booth to wait for Tang Xian. It seemed, even after all these years, Tang Xian still had the same habit. She enjoyed making others wait for her, so she could highlight her social standing. But, Tang Ning did not look bothered. She simply remained seated and leisurely flipped through some magazines. Surprisingly, out of the three magazines in front of her, she appeared on the front cover of two of them. Half an hour later, Tang Xian finally made an appearance. Faced with the ruthlessly skilled Tang Xian, Tang Ning looked like a delicate rose. Tang Xian was dressed in a dark red turtleneck sweater, topped off with a black trench coat. Her ink black hair was styled into voluminous curls which flowed down the back of her body. The makeup on her face was bright but not vulgar and her beauty carried with it a trace of aggressive wildness. After she spotted Tang Ning, she immediately pulled out a contract from her diamond-encrusted handbag, this is a transfer certificate for the shares of my entertainment agency. Have a look at it. If you are happy with it, sign it. Tang Ning did not respond. The corners of her lips carried a slight sense of ridicule. A moment ago, I was downstairs drinking some tea with a client. I saw the car you arrived in, although you are currently dating a big shot in the entertainment industry, it doesn't seem like you hold much importance to him. The fact that you don't hold a title or special identity to him is quite disadvantageous. Sign this contract, it will assure you don't end up with nothing in the future. Tang Ning looked down, picked up the coffee cup in front of her and gave it a gentle sip, did you call me out here today for this? A few days ago, grandfather mentioned your name in front of me. Are you afraid I'll return to the Tang household? Tang Ning finally understood Tang Xian's motive. Her voice got colder, if you didn't come to disturb me, I would have completely forgotten about the existence of the Tang family. You can take back the agency. If you don't want me to return, I only need you to follow one condition, don't ever show up in front of me again. My true wish is for you to retreat from the modeling industry, Tang Xian spoke in an even colder tone, you are becoming more and more famous. Every time someone mentions you, they are bound to think of your family background. Although we don't want to admit your relation to us, the media will directly tie us together. I don't want to see the name of a Tang family member appear in any filthy magazines. Having our names appear alongside the names of cheap people makes me disgusted. Really? I don't think they are cheap at all. At least they depend on their own abilities to make a living, Tang Ning refuted calmly. Tang Xian, you need to remember, the reason I'm not returning to the Tang household is because I'm being generous. It's not because I owe you anything. From now on, don't act like you have the right to tell me what to do. I have the freedom to do what I want to do. Tang Xian was a little stunned after speaking, Tang Ning stood up. However, at this time, Mo Ting's tall handsome figure appeared in front of the two women, are you done? Ahoy, uh -huh. Tang Ning nodded. Miss Tang was being extremely generous and wanted to give me an entertainment agency. Mo Ting wrapped his arm around Tang Ning and glanced at the transfer certificate as he laughed. I wonder where Miss Tang's idea of her superiority came from? You are from the Tang family, whereas Tang Ning is a member of the M.O. family, the M.O. family sits high above the Tang family. So, you should stop thinking of yourself as invincible. 
don't come looking for Tang Ning again. Otherwise, don't blame me for thinking the Tang family is trying to suck up to the M.O. family. On the surface, Tang Xian remained composed. But, deep down, she was so angry, her entire body was trembling in fury. Tang Ning found out she ranked third in the world's most beautiful legs award from M.O. Ting, who orchestrated Fang Yu's announcement to boost her international status. She planned to fly to Milan during stupid filming. Yu Shan Shan requested condensed shooting due to a hidden agenda, approved by M.O. Ting. Hai Rui's press release hyped stupid with top talent and secrecy around the screenwriter. Tang Ning's admiration for M.O. Ting was evident, drawing attention at the event. M.O. Ting's gesture towards Yu Shan Shan hinted at their strained relationship. M.O. Ting sat with Tang Ning, and when he left, reporters swarmed her. Tang Ning deftly evaded personal questions, praising the film instead. She refused to confirm rumors about her involvement, glancing at Yu Shan Shan, but denying knowledge of any such speculation. Tang Ning's adept handling of the media showcased her growing skill in navigating tricky inquiries. Despite the reporter's attempts to probe her personal life, she remained focused on promoting the film and avoided revealing any sensitive information. At the press release for Stupid, Tang Ning found herself in the midst of probing questions from reporters, particularly regarding her absence from the cast despite being President Mo's girlfriend. As she navigated through these inquiries, Yu Shan Shan stepped in to ostensibly support Tang Ning, but her words carried a hint of condescension and thinly veiled criticism. Yu Shan Shan's intervention, though appearing helpful, felt more like a backhanded compliment to Tang Ning. While Tang Ning managed to gracefully deflect the reporter's insinuations, she couldn't shake off the underlying tension with Yu Shan Shan. Tang Ning's departure from the event underscored her discomfort with the situation, especially with Yu Shan Shan's veiled remarks. In the aftermath, media headlines twisted the narrative, suggesting that Tang Ning had attempted to leverage her relationship with M.O. Ting to secure a role in the film. These accusations were baseless and infuriated Tang Ning's manager. Long Ji, who vehemently defended Tang Ning's integrity and talent. Tang Ning, however, remained composed, unfazed by the slanderous gossip. Meanwhile, Yu Shenshen's actions hinted at ulterior motives, suggesting a deliberate attempt to undermine Tang Ning's reputation. Her alliance with Jae King, a notorious figure in the industry, hinted at a darker agenda, one that Tang Ning couldn't ignore. Despite the controversy, Tang Ning remained steadfast in her conviction. She admitted her lack of experience in acting but refused to let the negativity affect her. Tang Ning's humility and resilience were evident in her refusal to engage in petty rivalry or succumb to provocations. Back at home, M.O. Ting comforted Tang Ning, assuring her that he was aware of the situation and had his own plans to address it. His unwavering support and protective stance reaffirmed Tang Ning's trust in him. Together they faced the challenges posed by the industry with unity and strength. As the days passed, Tang Ning focused on her upcoming projects and ignored the noise generated by the media. She understood that in the cutthroat world of entertainment, staying true to oneself was the ultimate victory. Tang Ning's unwavering determination and grace under pressure only served to elevate her reputation further. In the end, Tang Ning's talent and integrity spoke for themselves. Despite the attempts to smear her name, she emerged unscathed, her star shining brighter than ever. And as for Yu Shan Shan and her cohorts, their schemes ultimately crumbled in the face of Tang Ning's resilience and M.O. Ting's strategic prowess. In the world of fame and fortune, where alliances were fragile and ambitions ran deep, Tang Ning stood as a beacon of authenticity and strength, proving that true success came not from manipulation or deceit but from staying true to oneself and one's principles. Over the next few days, Yu Shan Shan officially started filming. The gossip Tang Ning had originally expected to fade, instead attracted Yu fans to M.O. Ting's social media page. They started leaving comments asking him not to go down the wrong path and not to let Tang Ning ruin the film. But, M.O. Ting's social media page was where all the couple fans gathered. So, as soon as they saw the comments left by the Yu fans, there was no way they could hold back their anger. 
they immediately retaliated with comments ridiculing Yu Shan Shan of having short legs and not being able to pull off the female lead's powerful presence. It was another late night. Tang Ning looked at the schedule and jobs Mo Ting had organized for her. Stupid had already commenced its filming, so it was also time for her to attend Fashion Week. But, as the thought of Yu Shan Shan's incident popped up in her mind, she couldn't help but feel uneasy. She had a special emotional tie to Stupid. Not only was it written by M.O. Ting, most importantly, Stupid allowed her to better understand the inner workings of M.O. Ting's mind. A husband doting person like herself, could not possibly allow anyone to mess up her husband's creation. For example, when it came to someone like the male lead, Lin Sheng, he had once said in front of the public that he supported Yu Shan Shan and suggestively ridiculed Tang Ning. But it did not make Tanjing feel uneasy. This was because Lin Sheng was extremely serious about the script. All Tang Ning cared about was whether he was serious about his work. Apart from that, she did not care what he did or said. On the other hand, Yu Shan Shan was different. It was the middle of the night and Tang Ning was rolling around restlessly in bed. Perhaps it was because she didn't want to wake up M.O. Ting. She tried to gently tiptoe to the garden to get some fresh air. But, M.O. Ting always took note of what was in his arms. How could he not notice that it was empty? It's only 3 a.m., why are you awake? Tang Ning turned around and shook her head, I can't sleep. Am I giving you too much pressure? M.O. Ting asked as he hugged Tang Ning from behind. Let's not change a thing. If Yu Shan Shan stops doing what she is doing, or the person behind her stops doing what they are doing, we don't need to make this decision. Nothing needs to change. What if they don't stop? M.O. Ting's eyes suddenly darkened a few shades. Tang Ning turned around and wrapped her arms around M.O. Ting's waist, then, I'll have to tell them I'm sorry. They can bully me, but they can't bully you. I'll act in your film. No matter how difficult a task. I will try my best for your sake. M.O. Ting gave a gentle smile as he tightened his embrace around Tang Ning, okay. H.M.M.P.H., who told Tang Ning to be a husband doting wife. After the couple came to an agreement, M.O. Ting led Tang Ning back to the bedroom. He wondered how much this issue must have bothered Tang Ning, for her to not get any sleep over it. He didn't intend on pressuring her like this. But since it couldn't be controlled, his heart ached a little. Now that he had made a promise to Tang Ning that he would give Yu Shan Shan a chance, he would have to act on it, there was no way he'd break it. So, the next day, M.O. Ting went to visit the set of Stupid at the film studio. While Yu Shan Shan was on her break, he called her into the waiting room. Although they were classmates, Yu Shan Shan did not dare to look M.O. Ting in the eyes. His gaze was too powerful and seemed to see straight through to a person's heart. 